Here we go. You are now listening to Random Rambling with Rock. Yay! This is the anthem. You're ready for some random shit from Rob. Now everybody stand up and lift your arms. Put your hands in the sky like you're pinching stars. Go piss on Mars! What? It's so random. It's all gravy. The podcast is Rob. Yeah, go crazy. Yup. No kind of shit like that. That's what Rob says when he runs off track. Fun fact, tuck that in your brain. Fuck that nuts, that's we act insane. In the fast lane, still smooth like butter. Rob, dude, you one cool ass brother. Motherfucker. You might hear that about every other word, but who's keeping count? The ramblings get so random, what's happening? I'm babbling. So much you can't handle me, chattering teeth. Sound like a battle axe bashing the beat. Don't laugh when I speak, cause really, we're just some idiots. I ain't talking about a little bit, I'm talking fully illiterate. Like little kids trapped in a grown man's body. Acting a fool like Lindsay Lohan party. Like it's a part of your life, we party all night Blackout, that's how we party it right Hit the Walmart cause we bored as shit Instagram and upload the vid <laughs> look, at, look at Rob hanging out in the Walmart for no reason Just Instagram and he got his phone out Walking around looking at himself like Hey look at me, I'm walking through Walmart It's so random Rob It's so random, random. but that's what we love Random ramblings with random Rob ramblings. Random, ramblings. Random, random ramblings Motherfucking random freaking ramblings. motherfucking Random ramblings Random ramblings Random ramblings Random ramblings Blah 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 What up everybody, this your boy B-Rob and I'm back with another edition of the Random Rounds with Rob podcast. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you, the listener, for coming back each and every week or however you listen to podcasts. If you're a first time listener, I appreciate you so much for giving my show a try. And if anybody recommended you to me, uh, whenever you in their vicinity, give them a crisp high five or send them a, a DM. Just go on slide in that motherfucker and be like, Yo, man, thanks for that podcast recommendation. Don't be like them fucking clickbait, retweet, like hoarding motherfuckers on goddamn Twitter. Be like, hey, I'm going on a road trip. Got any podcast recommendations? Hey, damn, I just found out what podcasts are. Got any podcast recommendations? Fuck them son of a bitches. The, the, not, the non-sincere ones, at least. But, you know, there's... Uh, some uh, actual people out there looking for good podcast recommendations, but the rest of you sorry bastards, fuck you. Kiss my ass. Anyway, got a guest joining me on this edition of the Random Rounds with Rob podcast. He is the mayor of the Starting Five podcast, and he is here with me, Mr. Dan Dinkins. How are you, sir? What up, yo? Shit, chill. What's homie? going on, everybody? If you don't mind, I always like to get my little introduction. This is the boy, the mayor, that DJ named Ace Five, your mom's favorite fat guy from deepest, darkest Africa. <laughs> and you being a wrestling fan, you should know about deepest, darkest Africa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Man, but it's, it's a pleasure to uh, have, you, have you on with me. Have you on with yes, that, that sounded conceited as fuck. Have have you on the show? There you go. <laughs> but um, yeah. how, how how do we begin? Um, first well, of all, I got I got a statement off your one. One I got to say I like when you say the crisp high five. Yeah, and then when you calling out the people sharing the podcast, I, and you said uh, you know don't be one of them clickbait fools on Twitter. First and foremost, fuck Twitter. But secondly, um. Don't be one of these people on Instagram. They'll be like, I love your page. Oh. PM me for this or follow my thing. Yo, here's a heart emoji. Come follow my page too. Yeah. I hate those spamming accounts. Or they'll be like, yo, DM me, man. Yo, I make hot music. Like my shit. I'll be typing back. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> or I'll be like, why? Yeah. And I'll... then you know they don't respond? It's yeah. just delete it. Yeah, like um, the ones I like is j- just the one that you just said. Uh, hey, uh, I make fire music, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, hey, I make a fire podcast. Want to be a guest and promote your music on my show? And I don't get no response. <laughs> no answer. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, I- at least that way, I mean, we can help each other out. I can have you on the show. I can get a guest out of it. You can get your music out there or, you know, some some publicity. Absolutely. But, you know, it's just a fucking bot or fucking app or whatever the fuck they're using. Uh huh. One of those Huawei, one of those Huawei, uh, 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 <laughs> uh like generation sites yeah. where they got like thirty thousand phones going and clicking and shaking spins for people. Oh man, like um another one. Now you'd be like, uh, 
don't have shit to do with the picture or whatever. I can have a picture of a can of corn or whatever. And it was like, yo, you put you posting some fire content, man. All the other ones that be yeah. like, <laughs> he's like, I don't know what's up with this. I don't know what's up with this picture, but your your contrast seems off or some shit. I'm like, what the fuck is you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, I like I like the I like the yo dope content. Come like my page too and check out my new music with ABC one two three and HDMO TV and all them fucking MCs. <laughs> Another one that would piss me <laughs> off really. Shit. <laughs> Another one would be like, uh, man, you doing your thing over there? I mean, how would you feel about uh, representing this apparel brand? <laughs> Whatever the fuck, right? Like, send me a free shirt first. And first and foremost, for me, I need a 4X. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, let me see what I can do about a 4X. That's what everybody says to me. So, no. yeah, let's see about representing your apparel. <laughs> Fuck that apparel shit. I'm making my own apparel, God damn it! I want somebody to buy my shit. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Which, Pretty which much. I, which I appreciate. I know you, you um, folded your boy a little change for a shirt. I appreciate that very much. Yeah, yeah, you know. Waiting for the return, but I wait. It's okay. It's oh, cool. you, you, cool. you got the return. The return coming in November. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, true indeed, true indeed. <laughs> we'll shout that out at the end of the show because, yes, your boy the mayor is linking up with B-Rob at the end of the year. And I say, sorry, I missed you when, when uh, even though I did say, yo, hit me up, but, you know, when you came up and you was in the New York City vicinity, yeah. you know, I definitely would have tried to link with you, but I... I think I was broke that weekend anyway, so, you know, in a way, I was glad you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, man, that was just like a wild experience anyway, just being up there for the first time. i never been that far north, and um, I got I didn't know how many people I actually knew that lived in the area. I mean, you were among the few uh, former service members that I served with and uh, just other podcasters and um, guests I even had on the show because, like, I was taking pictures in Times Square and uh was at uh Stacy Cordell and uh Jamie Gravy. They both comedians from down this way that live up in that area. And I'm taking pictures and shit. He commented, he's like, Oh shit, you in New York? And I was like, Oh fuck, I forgot he here. <laughs> you know? So <laughs> I was kinda upset. It always that I, happens like that. It yeah. always happens like that. You get you always get from them people, yo, how come you didn't let me know you was here? Yo, actually, matter of fact, one of my one of my boys, shout out to Jason, who actually Again, the event we're going to name later, he's the guy who coordinated it. Mm-hmm. He hit me up and texted me like once. I'm like, yo, yo, if, if if I see you in Philly or whatever, or if I see you in New York, like I, I would expect, you know, I would ex- I forgot the text message, but it was so weirdly worded like on some like, yo, if you in my city on some almost like, how dare you not hit me up? But yeah. I was like, yo, I haven't been in Philly in months. And he was like, yo, my bad. I was fucking wild drunk yesterday and I thought I thought I, w- I was at my friend's party and I was kicking him with a dude that I thought was you the whole time <laughs> <laughs> so yeah man I want some of what he had yeah word I, I, I'm past due for that I'm telling you yeah cause like um yeah man I wish I had more time it was just I, I got in Saturday morning and I hit the ground running or whatever my homeboy um I met him down the road from the airport we went throwing axes and shit and went to the mall and hung out and shit and then another homeboy drove in from an hour away that i hadn't seen in years and we hung out i met his wife and everything and they about to have their first kid and shit and man it was just crazy and then after that i drove all the way the fuck to somewhere the fuck new jersey to meet ice in the face so we can record a podcast live in their studio and then now my uh, dro- then I drove into the city to meet my homeboy at the hotel. And then I was so amped up and hyped up and shit to be there and to do shit that I didn't want to go to sleep. So I drove into Times Square. Well, I Ubered into Times Square, which is expensive as fuck. And um, yeah. I met up with another podcast that I uh, frequent, uh, the uh, freaking RBR Weekly Wrestling Talk. They had a meet up down there. So I was there. And then I walked to Times Square. And then I was taking pictures and doing 360 videos. I seen a rat jump down the sewer pipe. And then um, I seen the time <laughs> machine from Back to the Future and all that kind of crazy shit. Get that in. 
Did any of the uh, did any of the the costume people out there try to say, "Hey, want a picture?" Five dollars. Nah. Did they hit you with that too? Nah. It was only the one dude that was dressed like Doc Brown that had the damn uh, freaking the DeLorean out there. But damn. Oh, that's cool. I seen some uh, women walking around in bikinis at two, three o'clock yep. in the morning. So that was cool. Yep. <laughs> There used to be, there used to be, I think, uh, a woman that walked around topless, but I wouldn't know, man. You, you did what uh, a tourist is supposed to do mm-hmm. when coming to New York City is you did, you did the Times Square thing. So next time it'll be like, all right, let me check out Central Park. Mm-hmm. Then you might be one of those that says, hey, let me take the Staten Island Ferry to come to my borough just to get off the boat and get right back on and say, hey, this place sucks. Let me go back to Manhattan <laughs> and, then, and then look at the Statue of Liberty from a distance and all that. So you did the touristy thing to do. Yeah, I, you had, did it. You did it. I had my first slice of New York pizza. You probably didn't even get it from a good place. I, well, shit. I'm, I'm, I mean, yeah, I mean, I didn't go to like the, the tourist traps or whatever. I just hit the mom and pop joint that was like, what, $2 a slice or some shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the dollar slice joints, that's that's as low as New York pizza is going to get. <laughs> but there's definitely, I will say that I, I don't even know, I don't even need to know where you got it from. <laughs> just know that there's plenty better than what you had before you try to trash it. Like, Oh. Philly cats try to do sometimes, or or not even Philly. Shout out to my Philly people, but my you know Chicago tries to shit on New York pizza, and yeah, let's just say they serve cake, we serve pizza. Yeah, that that <laughs> that is they call that shit a pie. That is actually a pie. You know that motherfucker is like thick as fuck. Fucking pizza casserole and shit. You know, yeah, and I, I, that was one. Of, that was one of my big regrets or whatever. I mean, I went to Chicago one time as well, and that was one of my missions to either get a hot dog or a motherfucking uh slice of pizza. I mean, we had some pizza, yeah. but it, but it wasn't the thick, you know, you know, deep dish Chicago pizza or whatever. It was just like another yeah. mile, mile. Same here, same here, bro. I went to Chicago. I think it was in 2011, and same here. I didn't, I didn't get to, but I didn't like at that time, like. I wasn't aware of like the uh the Italian beef sandwich. Yeah. You know, I didn't get the I didn't get the hot dog and I definitely didn't have the stereotypical deep dish pizza. Mm. But when I did go there, I did have this place that one of my teammates uh had looked up and found, which uh my I used to play football for my jobs team and we you know, every year there's a travel game. Like I've been to Texas, I've been to Houston and whoop the Houston police officers teams ass down there. <laughs> but in Chicago, we lost the game, but we went to this spot called Kuma's Corner. Mm-hmm. It was a burger joint. One of the best burger places I think I've ever eaten from. And every plate was like double or triple what your average place would look like. Mm-hmm. Like, like if these cats, I don't eat beans, but these cats got a black bean burger. Like it was covered in black beans and it was literally the whole patty was covered, spilled over to a good inch around the burger itself. Like that's how much are the toppings. Like I walked out of there with the burger. I don't even remember the burger I had. All I just know is I was carrying a small 20 pound, seven ounce child in me. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No. And I was big already. I was playing football at 385 at the time. And I literally was carrying like another 20 pound baby. It was rough, but it was so good. Oh man! But enough about Chicago. We ain't out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, shit. Whenever um, I get down there, I'm gonna touch down in Philly and um, you know, truck it the way in. So I mean, I gotta find me a cheesesteak spot. <laughs> and that's another thing. Just the only thing I'll tell you is stay away from Pats and Genos. Very well. Those are the tourist traps. And once you eat from a real spot out of Philly, you I, like literally anytime I go down there, I don't even I don't even think about going to those places no more. Just stay away from those uh, those uh, traps. The places that I hear that are good that I haven't been to yet, and I go to Philly every you know once every few months or so, mm-hmm. is Ishka Bibbles, Max's, and then. The place that I have been to that I rave about the best is this place called Chubby's, but it's a little further into and like north in in Philly. What was that other it's one? It's in this part, I think. You said Chubby's was the last one. Chubby's was legit. 
the Ishka Bibbles, and yeah. I think Max's. I believe they're both in South Philly. I know Ishka Bibbles is, but I've never been there. Ishka Bibbles, that sounds like, I don't know, fucking Pokemon name or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sound like an old Saturday Night Live character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Popo, come and get hey, you. Don't. No, no, no. You understand. I'm out. I'm at work. We out here in Manhattan today. I work in Manhattan and I'm right off the West Side Highway. And that just happened to be a FDNY ambulance going up the, the West Side. West Side. But um, uh, I've been trying to, you know, I, I'm, I'm taking care of the audio on my side when I'm when I'm not talking. <laughs> I but I am um podcaster, fellow brother, man of the the internet webs yeah. and whatnot um you we was talking a little bit off air and whatnot just you know some general uh what's the name of that that uh, cheesesteak place again ishka bibbles yes. maxes or chubby yeah we was having a, a our general ishka bibble that, that's our conversation ishka bibble <laughs> 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 and then um you was talking about you know it's been about four years since you started your show or been podcasting in and general in actuality, it's this year marks five years for me in podcasting. I started back in 2014 with my boy LG, who right now he still ain't talking to me because, you know, what I, what, you know, just a brief scenario of the situation. When you're friends, I thought you're able to tell your friend the truth. Yeah. But my, my man has always been a person that it's like if he had an idea, he wants to stick to the idea. Mm. And then if he throws you the idea, he's hoping you stick to his idea, too, to certify his opinion. Yeah. But I was telling him, nah, yo, you got to come more original. Your shit's like your shit's looking stale. Like we started. <clears throat> well, I'll give you the story. I'm sorry. I kind of broke off. I was just trying to state like me and him haven't talked in like talk, talked in a long time. Mm. But me and him, he hit me up. was like, yo, I think I want to do a podcast or whatever. I just say, yo, just say the word when, you know, I always wanted to do a radio show or something. Just say when, yo, I'll, I'll even start buying the equipment. Don't worry about the money, whatever. The money I'll tell you about in a minute. Mm -hmm. But so we, we started the, we started the whole thing. He created the name. I wasn't feeling it at first, but then it just grew. We originally started as talking my team. Mm hmm. And it felt a little vanilla to me. It felt, you know, we turned talking my team to talking my team became the fourth quarter, which both shows we just talked football mm -hmm. because my boy used to play. He used to know basketball. Now he only really knows football. So we only talked football. So I was, I said to him, like, yo, I was always saying to him, yo, we got to expand. Let's get into more shit. Yeah, but I'm not into the other stuff anymore. I just know football or whatever. All right, cool. You know, we got to expand. You know how it is when it comes to consistency. And consistency yeah. with me in podcasting is big because you, you just have to. You got to stay consistent. So consistency with us was falling off. We'll go a week, then we'll do a week, and then we'll skip two weeks, and we'll come back another week. Then it just became delayed, delayed, delay. We're working. We're still working. We're off. We're on. We're off. Then it was like, yo, I want to start my clothing line. I was like, all good. You know, he asked me if I wanted to buy in with him. When he, when he uh, created the name, it was another name that just didn't grab me. I didn't feel it. So I was like, nah, I'm good on this one. Because I just, it didn't, it, nothing felt authentic to me. Like, it didn't associate with me the, the title of his clothing line. Mm -hmm. That's where the beef between him, me and him came in. So it was like, yo, we haven't recorded in a while. My man, JP, he was talking about wanting to do a radio show. I told him we got, I got the platform already. You know, we developed the name, the starting five. We want to talk more than just football, you know? So how about as long as you don't mind, man, because I started this with you. So I want you okay with this. And that's how I move. Like, you're my boy. I'm, I, and we started the venture together. I'm going to ask, it's almost like I'm asking you permission. You know, though I'm a grown man, we're grown men, I shouldn't have to ask you permission. Mm -hmm. But it's a respect thing to me. So I went out to my man out of respect, like, yo, 
me and my boy JP, we want to do this. We're going to go this way with the podcast, you know? And he was like, all right, cool. Because, you know, we ain't doing shit. You know, I'm not really feeling like recording much anymore. I want to focus on my clothing line. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm mm-hmm. going to keep talking my team. Or we, we actually converted it to the talking my team network yeah. because before we split up, we actually had three other, we had three shows. No, we had more than that. We had the, the fourth quarter, which was our show, the main show. Then we had my, uh, my own, uh, uh, little piece that I was doing called blown calls, which is something that I was doing like whenever I felt like it. Yeah. Uh, but then that turned into eventually turned into the mayor's office today. Um, he was doing a thing, the mind from the mind of LG, which was his own like rant session that he was doing. Um, we had a baseball show. I forgot what we named, what we called that, but the kid did only three episodes and then fell off on us. Uh, my man, coach Casey was doing a basketball show called just the facts and shit fell off with him eventually over the years because consistency and you know he he actually coaches basketball he you know he's a family man he's actually married to one of my best friends uh so we had like five shows so we called us the talk of my team network fast mm-hmm. forward to back back to where we were at we split up me and jp started the star in five i kept the podcast network he kept doing his thing with the um with with his clothing line you know, he got he had people like Nate Robinson buy a couple pieces. Uh, his you can see some of his stuff on uh, Black Ink Crew. I don't watch the show, but big ups to my boy anyway. You know, but part of the split up with me and him was his pieces started to get unoriginal. Like he was just taking pictures, slapping it on the shirt. That was it. And I, I had to tell him about it, and so we had a falling out. But you know, nonetheless. He claimed he supported the podcast. He don't. That's why me and him don't speak. But I still recognize him as my boy because that's my boy. I was his best man in his wedding. And we started this podcast thing together five years ago. So now it's the start of five, me and JP. We've been at it almost four. Just close to four, I think. Mm-hmm. And we've done it's it's we've we made sure that the main focus is always sports, but if, if the, the topics are out there, we do politics, we do hip hop, we did professional wrestling when the conversation was there. Uh, we've had interviews. Like, I don't know if you, you know, you grew up in the South. I'm not sure if you're familiar with DJ Ralph McDaniels, but he's a, a, a hip hop legend from, from up here from out of Queens. He did a, he still does the longest running video show, in New York City, possibly in the country or the world, called Video Music Box. It's still on 35 years uh, as of last year. Last year was his 35th anniversary. Word. We had him on our show. Um, we had my man Will Strickland on our show, who um, we met on Facebook at least. Six, we've been Facebook friends for a good six, seven years now. But he was... Uh, known back in the day as an underground radio DJ back in his college uh, days in Texas, in Texas. Yeah. Um, I think he went to Rice University, but he had one of the more successful underground radio shows, like something for the South, something equal to what Stretch and Barbito was doing in New York, okay. but was playing everybody's shit. And part of his backstory too, like he helped Wu-Tang get a deal um, he was there for a lot of like seminal moments in hip hop, like when like Biggie's first promotions and stuff like that. And, and, uh, now he's, he's in Canada. He's on the TSN network. You can see him up there on, you know, on a couple of shows up there. And then he runs a tournament with, uh, with the same person I just mentioned, uh, Bobito Garcia, aka, uh, you know, Bobito Baba from the radio back in the day from Stretch and Bob. They do a basketball tournament called Full Court 21, where it's literally five on five, and you're playing the game of every man, pretty much every man, 21. But instead of playing it on the half court, you're playing up and down the court. Oh snap! So like we had him, yeah, we had him on the show. We've had uh, an Olympic gold medalist, uh, Lamont Smith. He was a part of the '96 Olympic four by 400 gold medal winning team. That's the same. And then uh, we had his. That's the same huh? team. I said that's the same uh, year Kurt Angle was in. 
I believe. Oh yeah, oh, uh, he went he went bronze in that, right, or silver? Oh, Kurt Ang- no, Kurt Angle, no, the wrestler, Kurt Angle. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Right. Gold medal. We, oh, we gonna get, we're going to get into some wrestling in a minute. Broke a freaking neck. So, We're going to do some wrestling, but we're not. But, yeah, but like we, I'm, we, had, we had him on the show, and we had his son, who is, uh, who is uh, going to the University of Houston as of right now. And, you know, he's a potential, uh, you know, he's on the way to doing great things in the world of track and field. Um, we had a couple Willingboro legends that, because my boy JP is from Willingboro, New Jersey. So he, uh, you know, he, he, he knew Lamont Smith. Like he grew up with Lamont Smith. So that's how we was able to get him. You know, we've gotten a number of people that are just local, like Willingboro, New Jersey people, but who've done big things. Um, we spoke to the brother of, oh man, what's the dude's name? that got killed in Chicago basketball star from high school. They did the 30 for 30 about him. Oh, uh, don't give me the line. I don't know dude. if you remember. Uh, damn it. Oh, Benji Wilson. Okay. We talked to, we talked to his brother, Jeff Wilson on the show about his brother's life. Cause Benji was supposed to be like, like he was supposed to be the man, like, like Michael Jordan level, the man coming out of high school but tragically got killed and all that. So, yeah, I mean, we try to do some interviews. We mostly do sports. We do hip-hop. We do politics. We'll talk about whatever, whatever's going on, current news, but mostly generally sports. But, like I said, wrestling is, when I can squeeze wrestling in, especially like classic wrestling, and I know you're a wrestling guy, that's, that, it, it hits my heart because, it's something that I always said growing up, I was a thousand dollars away from actually doing it because that's what the wrestling schools were costing back in the day up here. I was a thousand dollars for the classes and a car because I had no way to get to these places. <laughs> uh, well, well, what changed your mind? What, what, what deterred you off the path? Um, I don't know. Trying to just trying to secure something. Yeah. I guess when it comes to work, like stability, stability in, in knowing that I'll have something locked in. Like right now I work for the city of New York and I'm good. Like I have seven years minimum left to go before I can retire. I can retire at the age of 47, just turning 48 years old. Word. So I'm good. I, and funny what stopped, not, not much stopped me much other than, you know, right now being physically out of shape and turning 40 at the end of the year, I literally was thinking, you know what, as a 40th birthday present to myself, I should go do wrestling training right now and try to get a match in before my 40th birthday. And then if I want to continue, continue. Yeah, I mean, and that, that's what it was for me. I mean, I have a minor in professional wrestling as well, and it was just the – I wanted to see – what um what it was you know i want to you know actually take the bumps and go through all the paces and whatnot just so i can get a better appreciation for the thing that i enjoy a lot right 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 but i like when i was younger like i actually wanted to do it like Mm -hmm. i was you know i was of the mind of like yo i'm i'm going to eventually be wwf champion in life like how fucking like edge wrote in his yearbook type of shit yeah like that's how I was in my mind. Yeah, I mean, but it didn't happen. I just remained a fan. <laughs> I don't watch as hardcore as I used to, but AEW might get me back in the loop. Did you watch the show? Nah, I missed it, but I I did I did find a a, a YouTube pretty much highlight video of the Cody and Dustin match because that's the one that I read about. That was like the highlight of the night kind of match. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like literally was pulling at the heartstrings of all the fans. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was dope. It was dope. It was dope. And it was dope that the two brothers did their thing, hugged it out at the end, you know, tried to fucking kill each other, bloody as hell. And, you know, and Dustin was like, Dustin was just made me more of a fan because I was like, yo, this dude is hitting shit. I'd never seen him hit yeah. unless he was doing it in Japan. Mm-hmm. Like they, he was, he was like, he was, Dustin was wowing me. I know Cody's nice because Cody was misused 
yeah. especially in the WWE, definitely misused. I have, I have my reservations about him, but as far as um, Cody goes, I believe he's solid. But it's just like I feel that he could do a little bit more. But at the same time, I mean, wrestling, if you're going to be doing it, is a game of longevity. So, I mean, you ain't got to bust out a 450 yeah. every goddamn match. You ain't got to do this and this every damn match. You, you know, save it for those bigger moments and whatnot. Yeah, true indeed. But I believe, though, in this AEW promotion, he's got himself aligned in the right position. Yeah, he's got himself. He's got himself. You know, he he's in the background, and that's the, one of them things to me is what's going to make them thrive is the fact that they're going to have the youth of wrestling behind them, doing the writing, setting up the matches, like giving people matches that the fans truly want to see. Yeah, not fucking Roman Reigns versus fucking Brock Lesnar for like five hundredth time, like type shit, like. Yeah, you know, and and then and then too, I don't think they're gonna do bullshit like that, like fucking invite Brock, invite Brock Lesnar, and I, I'm a big fan of Brock Lesnar. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but I, I, you know, Vince McMahon lets him fucking come and go as he pleases, do what he wants, gives him the strap when he shouldn't have the strap. Like he should come in and you know be like a just like a set up rivalry type matches with him, yeah, and let him go off and do his thing. Like, not give him the strap. He don't have to work two, three months, come back, still retain the strap, come back another three, four months later, then then lose the strap. Like, that's the type of shit that fans, I think, personally, like myself, that what's helped me stray away from the WWE style of, of, of professional wrestling. And we're not going to talk about TNA. That's just pure trash. <laughs> well, it's coming around. It's, it's coming around. It's just a accessibility thing. I mean, I, I believe it's a great thing that they um, partner with Twitch to have their show on there. But I mean, that's good. Let, let's let's even look at it this way. All right, podcasting in itself been been around a long time, right? Mm-hmm. But there are still people now in the year of 2019. That don't know what the fuck a podcast is. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It did this not is mean, true. This is true story. And I and I kind of feel like th- that's the same way with Twitch. Even though it's a big platform for gamers and everything like that, you know, gamers going to know about it. But like to the average person right. that doesn't play video games all the time, they don't know what the fuck a Twitch is. You know. Right. And and two, I'm of the generation of we played our video games, and if we was watching somebody play. We was in the same room kicking it with our friends. Yo, pass the sticks next. Yeah. I'm not plugging in online to sit there and watch Ninja play fucking Fortnite for hours. Like, why am I watching you play this game when I could just be playing the game? Part makes me question my own daughters who sit there and watch Roblox videos for hours on end. Mm -hmm. But they actually do play the Roblox. So I'm not too mad. Yeah. (laughs) They actually do play it. I know that. But I ain't with that sitting there watching people play the game shit unless I'm in the building with them. Yeah. And that's what killed me too, man. Cause like I bought a Nintendo Switch for the kid. Cause I was like, oh man, this is portable. She's going to like this shit. And whatever. I got Smash Brothers and all that junk. And I wind up liking the console more than her. But she don't even play fucking video games on there. All she do is watch YouTube on the bitch. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. See, and. That was the dope thing. I, I have a Switch, too, though I have to probably buy a new one because warranty passed, the shit stopped working, and I dropped the ball on mailing it in. So that's my own fault. But uh, the, the Wii U was dope because that control had the screen on it. And so it would be we could watch TV, give the kids the remote, and they can go watch fucking Netflix on it. Yeah. That was when they had Netflix on it. Now the Switch don't have Netflix on it. Uh, I looked, uh, I tried, and it don't have Netflix. But yeah, the Switch is a dope console, man. I'm, I'm, I'm mad my shit ain't working. It, it, you know, it got my daughter playing Street. Well, no, actually, that didn't get her playing Street Fighter, but I was able to put her on to the Street Fighter twos because of the collection on the Switch. Oh yeah. But she's been playing. She's been playing Street Fighter five on her own. You know. And then let me make a correction. Mm. I actually. I did say I won't sit there and watch like on just the humble on Twitch, but when the shit's on ESPN or it was like Disney XD, 
I did sit there and watch the Street Fighter V tournament, mm. and I will tune in when ESPN is showing the Madden tournaments. Yeah. So I, I, I'll watch them because it's brief, but I'm not going to be logging into some website to watch somebody else. Like, you know, I, hey, you can watch me, but I, I'm not going to be doing the watching of you. Yeah. I'd rather play. <laughs> yeah, this is true. I mean, I've tried that in the past. It's just like, um, a group of us would get on and play a uh, Grand Theft Auto Five and just be running around terrorizing right. shit. And it's like we just be having goofy conversations in, in in the in between time. So a lot of times I just turn on the recorder and just let it go. And, you know, I did that before. Yeah, but it wasn't like. See, you know, now that could be the fun part. That could be the fun part of it, though. Uh, yeah. That's the listening to the listening to the goofy shit. And then you know, I guess you know what, because you're kind of maybe swaying my opinion a little. Being a podcaster and like listening to somebody talk radio or talk funny shit like that, like that is kind of fun. But it's also better when you know what's going on and you're watching them lose their mind to flip out. So Mm -hmm. I guess, I guess I can't hate on it, but I just know it ain't for me. That's all. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I watch in that vein is um, walkthroughs or whatever. If I go back and I play an old game, like right now I'm, I have Kingdom Hearts 3, haven't cracked the seal on it, haven't played it yet because I'm going back with my youngest one and we playing through one and two before we start playing through. Ah, cool. So like I, cool. I've i been trying to kind of breeze through it. So I've been going and watching a couple of walkthroughs because I haven't played these games since they originally aired on the original consoles and shit. So I just been trying right. to get it so I can get through it all pretty fast so we can jump on three. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, like. Kingdom Hearts, though I've always heard there was a phenomenal game, I was the least biggest fan of anything role play like. Mm-hmm. I can't I just couldn't do it, man. Like I've sat and watched my boy play Final Fantasy for hours. Yeah. And I would sit there literally for hours and be like, yo, how the fuck do you do this? Like, really? Like, my man sat there, he told me, he yo, this motherfucker sat fourteen hours, I think, one time, or sixteen hours through I think it was Final Fantasy VII, mm-hmm. whichever one came out on the PlayStation 1. Yes. Yeah, my man spent a straight 16 hours playing that game. I'm like, you, my boy, are fucking bugging. I couldn't do it. Like, that's, 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 that's the A. That's this. I, I, I like my games, but not that far. <laughs> like, you mentioned the Grand Theft Autos. Like, I actually, I figured, I found out about that game. By accidentally renting it one day, mm-hmm. back when back when it was Grand Theft Auto Two, yeah, with the over yeah, with the, the overhead down. view, yeah, the top down, that yeah. shit was fun, yeah. But then when three came out, something about the color patterns, mm-hmm. I can't sit there and watch that game because it makes me physically sick. Like I get nauseous, and I used to have to lay my head in a cool pillow for a good half hour or more with my eyes closed to get the vomit feel away from me. <laughs> yeah. Like, so all the Grand Theft Autos that everybody's rocking to these day, like Vice City, all that shit, even first person shooters, like Halo, all the way up from Halo, from Halo to fucking Call of Duties, all that. I still got a Call of Duty in my house right now. I think it was Modern Warfare 3 that I got when I bought the system. It came in the pack, still in the plastic, never opened. Man. Because I know if I tried to open that shit and try to play, exorcist type vomit might occur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I get like that when I play for longer than what I'm supposed to, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, I just it all stemmed from me from Wolfenstein 3D on the PC. Oh man! Like I used to, yeah. Like I used to be able to sit and play like Doom Two. Doom, yeah, Doom would brothers. fuck me up. Me and my brother's game, that was our game. I used to be able to spend three, four hours playing Doom 2. But then that went, and we got the Wolfenstein after Doom, and we tried playing Wolfenstein because that's where all that, like, you know, you could say first person originated from in a way. Yeah. Was Wolfenstein. I tried to go backwards, and them big ass pixels, oh my goodness. After like two hours of that game, I was ready to throw up. Yeah. Not going after killing Nazis. That was the fun part. It was always fun doing that. <laughs> but uh, but just the game itself, man, yeah. Enough vomit talk for me, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But uh, all in all, the Talk My Talk network and whatnot, um, what, from your personal opinion, now, how have you seen it grown from day one up until now? Is it different from what you envision it to be, or is it still kind of forming itself? It's, you know what, I've learned with doing this podcast and thing, and especially branching out and, and chopping it up with fellow podcasters, like this, which is, which is something that I love to do. Like I love networking with other podcasters. Like I say, like shout outs to my, my friends, the black tribbles, uh, shout outs to, uh, the Def Con Jive podcast. They were on, they were on my uh, podcast panel last year. Shout outs to ladies love hip hop. I helped them with the, I helped my friend summer, with the beginning stages of doing that. And within my own thing, I, I, it's, it's still a slow grind. Mm -hmm. It's still a slow grind. And like we've transitioned from talking about team network now to the starting five show Mm -hmm. where I still have a couple of the shows. Like right now it's just three shows. It's the starting five, the mayor's office, which is mine. And then my boy JP does views from the borough. Mm-hmm. Which he'll he'll have a spot where he'll just do a rant about something, and that's kind of where we've grown to so far. Like we've grown to where we're doing within us. We're still welcome to you know we're still open to allowing others to be a part of the network. Like I would like to have more podcasts flowing through my stream too to get more people buzzing. Yeah. But yeah, I mean it's still about trying to gain a buzz. You know, like it's it's that's the hardest part and. I've been ready to give up on the grind several times, but being consistent has stopped me from quitting. Yeah. And then just saying, nah, there's an end goal to this. There's an end goal. I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. Because my end goal within this is to actually, hopefully by the end of the year, possibly by November, have my online podcast radio network up and running. Okay. Yeah. That was an end goal because by retirement, I've always said I would like to own my own radio station by retirement. So where I'll have a place that we can go to, where I'll have a facility, whatever, and be broadcasting somewhere, whether it's online or even pushing to be on FM radio. Word. Like I want to, it's a goal of mine. So that's where the podcasting is going. The journey is still to me, I'm five years in podcasting, but I'm still building. And even if you're a person who gets, you know, a thousand spins an episode to 10,000 spins an episode, each time you're putting in an episode, you're still working. You're still grinding to get, to get more, to reach more in ears, to, you know, to, to, if you do the interviews, gain more interviews. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, reach just to, to, to further your reach is always the goal. Yeah. But I always, I, I always say to try to trick my mind off is if at least one person presses play, at least I'm still doing something right because yeah. somebody's listening. Exactly. Or, yeah. Um, I feel the same way you do, man. It's just like I want whatever I have to be a platform or a launching pad for someone else, you know, because I'm going to be there regardless. And, you know, I'd rather be there on the ground floor to watch that person come up and then, you know, instead of, you know, putting myself over, so to speak or whatnot, because cause I'm going to be here you regardless, walked, you know, my bad, my bad. Now I was going to say you walked right into a slogan that I always say that even my boy JP repeats. Now I, I used to always say, get down with us while we're down because the ride up with us is going to be that much sweeter. Yeah. And, you know, you talking about having a facility and whatnot. I mean, I often imagine, you know, doing something like that here in Houston, just having a place for, you know, podcasters that can come and do their things or, you know, just other means for them to promote their podcast to where, like, you know, th- this is the dream. This is the vision of mine, you know, to have a building to where they can come record if they want to or even rent equipment there to record if they want to. Or if they want to, or if they, um, a place that want to just, uh, want to be the people that generate content, like do videos and stuff, have a little media room for them to shoot their videos and all that shit like that. And, you know, just hang out and have a spot to go do what it is because, 
you know, there's a lot of us out there doing podcasts or whatever. You know, and some some are doing well, but there's not a lot of unity, really, man. I mean, there's there's a little sect of us here in Houston. We we hang out. We try to do for each other as best as we can. But it's just like we know there's more than this out there and they not reaching out or when we try to reach out to them, they not reaching back to us for whatever reason. But, you know, we I feel like all of us need to stick together because we not Joe Rogan. We not Kevin Smith, you know, and Mark Marin, all these other motherfuckers that, you know, people throw truckloads of money at them to just sit there and do the same shit that we doing right now, you know, but it is what it is, you know. <laughs> No, I, I, I and I 100% agree. And this this is why, like, part reason why, like, I've always went with the, the motto of, yo, in this podcasting thing, th- to me, there's no such thing as competition. Yet people treat it like there's a competition. Yeah. Because uh, it's something like, all right, well, let's just, I'll, I'll just announce it now. Your boy B-Rob is going to be up here in November with me at Atlantic City, New Jersey for J1 Con as I host the Black Finity Gauntlet podcast and content creator panel. All right, it's another it's another year I'm doing this where again I invited last year that when this originally started, it was started by a podcast group that's no longer in existence. Long story short, I can't tell all of it. It might be something I could tell you off air, but I can't tell you, you know, why, what happened yeah. to where this ended up becoming my thing. It became mine, the podcast panel. So what do I do? I reach out to people who I'm actually fans of. Why? Because I believe in what you just mentioned, the unity of this. Mm-hmm. We can all, it's, it's, it's an ever growing game to where I always express that in podcasting, there should be no rivals yeah. because this place is so vast that everybody is allowed to have a voice in podcasting. That's the beautiful thing about it is that you don't, like you mentioned that, you know, I, I literally was just listening to a uh, Joe Rogan podcast uh, a little while ago before we, we got up and you don't have a lot of people like him where you're getting, you know, 10 or 100,000 spins on an episode. You don't, there's not a lot of Jesus and Meros out there who can do 140, 150 spins an episode. But when you're down on our level, the community aspect of it is a big deal to help each other out, help each other grow. Don't be afraid to share the next person's podcast. Don't be afraid to say, yo, let's collaborate and do our, you know, let's do something together. You know, there's podcasts out there. There's a podcast out there that I'll continue to, I'll leave nameless. I've been trying to work with these people for a minute. But do they contact back? Nah, they work with other people out there. But I think in some ways, some of these people like that, that I've tried to, yo, let's link up, let's work together, see the whole rivalry thing, which to me, there is no rival thing at this. Yeah. You know, shout out to my boys in Ohio, the, the, the intramural league. These kids, I, I, you know, we found each other on Instagram. I think they liked our account. I see Neil a podcast, so I like them back. Yeah. And then we got to talking, like I got to chopping it up with them. We did a joint show before the Michigan Ohio State game because they're Ohio State guys. My boy JP's a Michigan guy. We lost the bet, unfortunately. But it's <laughs> shit like that that goes on where it's like, yo, collaborate. Like you're going to have to be on our show one time now. You know, like, yeah. don't be afraid to collaborate with others. Don't be afraid to reach a hand out and say, yo, I think you might have to tweak this here and there. Shout out to my man, uh, Bunchy Carter, who's going to be on the Black Finity Gauntlet panel, too. I had to reach out to him yesterday. Yo, I hear your guests through only your microphone. You got to check your audio levels next time. Like, yeah. yo, there's so much room for everyone to grow in podcasting that there should be no rivals. There should be no beast unless your beef was physical in the past. Mm. Then I can't help you with that. But there should be no rivalry thing. And this is a everybody can eat because I, what I was going to say before when I mentioned Joe Rogan and them is this is the best way to get your opinion out there because the talking head opinion 
is a consistent one. And you see it, like, take, for instance, like me, I watch ESPN all day. Almost every show on ESPN runs the same five to six to seven topics. And 75% of the time, there are hosts that almost word for word, you know, repeat the same opinion that the last one did. Yeah. And that's why I find what we do important because, because we're not those talking heads. We say what we want, we say what we feel, and we move how we move. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I, I think there's a lot of importance within podcasting. And where, like I said, where to, to go back to where we was at, where, where I see us is still growing and I ain't stopping. As much as I say I want to quit, I ain't stopping. Yeah, I got you, man. But, um, the J1 Con here coming up November 2nd and the 3rd? Or is yes. It? Yeah, all right. So how did that go about? I mean, how did you come into contact with it? I don't know if you know the genesis or the origin well, of it, but hit me yeah, to the game. Well, my man, uh, uh, I met Jason through the Black Tribbles. Um, they're a dope geek nerd radio pod, right? radio show and podcast out of Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. I met Jason through there, so uh, I've known them about three years now. Yeah, about three years, close to four. No, three years, because I, I physically met them in 2016 at the first Blackfinity Gauntlet, which was held at uh, Amalgam Comics in Philly. Um, yeah, I met them down there, I, and then eventually I linked up with Jason with, with the J1 thing last year. Like I said, story that I have to tell you off air in, in pieces. Um, I was kind of gifted this project of the Blackfinity Gauntlet uh, through my man, Big Baba Rob. Shout out to him in D.C. He created it when he started in Philly. He let a year last. And then I was, we, you know, I was like, when, I, when we met down there in Philly, when he first did it, I was like, I always I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of this because I was trying to get our name out there, you know. Jason hits him up last year, offers him the opportunity to bring this in. Rob hits me up like, yo, I couldn't think of no better person than to reach out to you to help me build this. Now, it was to help him build it, not the host, not the, it was to help him build it. But I was like, yo, I want to co-host this with you. I want to co-host it. Then it became all right. And he got into some trouble uh, with some other, with some stuff, like I said, the story I can't mention right now. Yeah. Uh, so to where it became, yo, I got to step away from this because we're taking a lot of heat on Twitter, this, that, and the third. You know, you can continue to do this if you want to. I was like, no problem. Say no more. I got it. Because before, when he first tapped me to, to do this, and he's like, yo, let's do this. I was like, like I said, say, I was like, say less. I already immediately started writing. I pretty much had the whole show written by the time we next spoke. So I was already prepared. And he dropped the ball on me, said, here you go, run with it. And I took it and ran with it. I invited, like I said, I invited a number of my favorite, uh, favorite podcasts to be a part of it. And I stayed, you know, constant within building constant state of communication with Jason, who is the creator of J1 Con, which he created, I think this is his, now his eighth year in doing it. And he, he, he pretty much created it in a, you know, there's your regular comic cons and all this out there, but the East Coast needs an anime and gaming video game based thing that does cosplay. You'll see, I think you might have it again this year. They do, they did cosplay wrestling. Like there's a, there's a, a company out there that, do, that does wrestling events in cosplay. And they were there last year. Like, so it, it's a dope event. It's held in a dope venue. It's at the Showboat Hotel. And like I said, me and Jason have been cool, but even better since with the continuation of building it. And then some other private things happened that I, again, I can't talk about that, you know, I, think might have made us a little closer because it was shit that I heard that I relayed back to him and you know whole whole, whole heap of situation that I can't get into yeah. but I, I think me and him are cooler than 
where I would have expected us to be, which we never had a problem. I never had a beef. It's all been all love with him from since day one. But, you know, like, there's somebody I could call a friend alongside, you know, if he needed me to continue to further with helping him build with J1, is no problem. I could do it for you. Mm-hmm. Word. So, but he's been at it. He's been at it for, I think now it's his eighth year. He built it from the ground up himself from, you know, like renting out small warehouse type spaces to renting out halls. And, you know, he made it to this big stage, a uh, whole former casino floor. He does, he gets the whole floor, the main floor, two days. Now, I know you say you yeah. you just um, kind of adopted the um, Blackfinity Gauntlet. Uh, program for the uh, con or whatnot, but how ha- have you been participating in the con before you got involved in it, or this is like uh, new to you as well? well? His his convention, yeah. his convention, no. But it was one of those that was like it's on my list that I eventually got to get to the support type of deals. But then you know the shit just fell in my lap, and so I was like, you know what? Now I have a hundred percent reason to be there and support. And help them with whatever we were. I said, I'm a dude that you, you want to reach out to me. If I can help you out, I help you out. Yeah. That's just me. Mm-hmm. I, I'll, you know, so that, that's how it became about. It was my first year going to the convention, but I was also going and working the convention in, in my own capacity. So yeah, last year was the first year. Word. Now, just being involved in it, um, the small amount of time that you've been with it. What do you foresee for it, you know, going forward? Like, do you feel that it can be the next big thing or it just still needs a little well, something yeah, if to he add keeps, to it? If he keeps grinding at it, it's going to be, it's going to, like, his his thing, and he's even shown me numbers. It has grown every year that he's done his convention. So for the podcast panel, I continue to hope to do the same thing. You know, last year we had a great spot in the hotel, mm-hmm. but you know, the, the, the storm didn't weather the right way for us as far as getting numbers inside the place that we were at. We were inside the former house of blues, now known as the bourbon room inside the showboat hotel. We was on the stage of the house of blues. So we can say we was, we did a panel on a stage that a number of music legends have performed on. Mm-hmm. I hosted a panel on that stage, but because of the location of where the, 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 the room is, it was out of the way at a convention floor. So we didn't get to absorb too many people coming in to listen. So if there was anything I could take from last year to make better is I wish more people can, could have came in. And that's something that with, you know, now we're doing the panel on the convention floor. We should be able to attain that goal. No problem. And getting more people in seats to hear what us podcasters have to say about, you know, being in podcasting. Like the, I plan on talking about, you know, our experiences, uh, thing, you know, things of that nature, what we've been through in podcasts and stuff like that. Yeah. Cool. So shit. And we didn't round it all out and everything. So, oh, not giving away too many details. What what do I have to look forward to when I when I make the trek up there in November? Questions and alcohol. <laughs> 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 Questions okay. and alcohol, and just kicking it with some good people, man. Very well. I mean, I can handle that. I, I can handle that very well. <laughs> good. 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 Yeah. Good, man. Stay with. Say it with your chest, with your chest out like a grown man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look in the mirror like, I know I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, this is a, I'm appreciative of the experience. Um, thanks for reaching out. Um, big shout outs to Mrs. B Rob for allowing me to go. I, I brought it up. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I brought Thank it you, Mrs. B Rob. <laughs> I, brought it up, I brought it up just in conversation. She was like, oh, so you going? I was like, Yes. Say no more. <laughs> With that, oh, so you going? I know. I'm. I've been married what, eleven years this year. I know. Oh, so you going? That means. Yeah, let me slide that in now before it's a no. 
Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Because like I, when you asked me originally, I told that was the first thing I told you. I said, let me let me talk it over with my my financial manager, which is my wife. And um, right. I mentioned it to her because, you know, I just came off a of comic palooza here in Houston. And um, I'm also be yep. at a uh, retro palooza here, which is a video game con retro uh, retro video games and anime uh, here in Pasadena on June 8th and 9th. So I'll be there doing that. And then I brought up this just in the conversation like, yeah, um, I'm gonna be at the retro con in June. And then um, I just got offered a spot here at the J1 con in um, Atlantic City and whatnot. And she was like, oh, OK, that's cool. And, you know, it, it didn't go much past that. And then um, we was talking about taking trips and everything. And I was just like, um, yeah, me, and you need to take another trip. This was kind of fun because uh, we went to Virginia this past weekend. And that was our first time ever going somewhere on a plane together in our 11 years of being married. And uh, oh, wow. So that was a cool, oh, wow. that was a cool experience or, or whatever. So we were just talking about future trips that we can plan and whatnot. Cause we got a freaking passport that we got that we never fucking needed, but you know, it expires, <laughs> it expires in 20, well, 2022. So we got, uh, my goal is to get at least one stamp in that motherfucker before I had to renew it. Yeah, I feel you, man. And, and the way we're going to have to travel by next year anyway is pretty much all going to be by passport. So. Yeah. Gotta gotta have that. Like and and funny, like I I I've been to we only me and my wife been to a couple places. Like we've drove away. Yeah. Like Atlantic City for us two has been like a you know, a, a us two kind of thing, like leave the we can leave the kids with somebody kind of trip. Uh we did that to Canada last year. Mm -hmm. And then was it the year no, it wasn't the year before. It was two years ago. We went to New Orleans. New Orleans, New Orleans was, was good. It was cool. Yeah. You know, so yeah, you gotta kind of. I mean, it's 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 been hard for me to be able to try to do things like with like that with the wife, even just to go out on a regular time. But oh yeah, I, I do. I've always understood we gotta we gotta squeeze those in so we can get our shit in. Yeah, because like cause September is a uh, her birthday and our anniversary month, so she already we already got a trip planned to go to New Orleans because she never been. And um, that's what she wanted to do for her 40th birthday. And so nice. we were talking about future trips, that trip coming up in September. And she's like, all right, yeah, we got the trip in September. Um, we'll try to plan another trip. And he's like, and you going to New Jersey in June, right? I was like, yes. <laughs> so she confirmed it, you know. <laughs> right, right. You just. You just got you just got to clear up the dates later. That's all. Yeah, yeah. So she get it, it's like she 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 unofficially un, unbeknownst to her gave the green light, but yeah. just the wrong date. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, the the, the the plane ticket is bought already. So that's dope. <laughs> I'm going to that motherfucker. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. But, but yeah, man. Just again, J One Con is the is the convention. Go to J One Con dot com. Pick up the tickets, forty five dollars for a two day pass, and come kick it with us during the Black Infinity Gauntlet podcast panel. For real, we, I said I'm hosting. If I'm hosting, which I'm the mayor from the Star Five. B Rob is coming up from Texas. We got my man Bungie Carter, aka Seven the Panther, coming from Tacoma, Washington, with his podcast Panther Politics. We got my people Spotless Minds, who last year. They closed out my Black Fitty Gauntlet and performed songs off their album, Lacuna. Word. Now they're going to be a part of the panel discussion as Beat Sneaks and Rhymes. They got a YouTube series that they just started putting out where they talk about, they go over, you know, break, like break these bars kind of conversation. Yeah. Where they'll talk about a song every week. They'll talk about a pair of speakers that each one of them likes and what's going on in the world. Dope YouTube show. And then I got my boys Nick and Ramon, who I got, did a show with earlier this year, the Garbled Podcast. Mm -hmm. These are two dope guys who do podcasts about pretty much whatever's on their mind. And they pick a topic usually, they do some news, and they go in on it. I'm waiting for one more podcast of these ladies to write me back because they were the first group of people that I hit up to be on this. They said yes, they have still not hit me back. 
about being a part of it. But I want them on this show. I'm not going to mention their names until they confirm. Yeah. So, again, J1 Con, $45 tickets. Hit it up. The room rates on, on the website are dope, too. Please buy the rooms through that website. Use whatever code Jason has up there. Is that, help the convention help itself to give you a better convention next year. Yes, J One Con nineteen is the promo code, I believe. There you go. Yeah, man, uh, I'm excited, and you know, I talked about this um, when I went to uh, New York, New Jersey area for WrestleMania, whatever. When I was on the Ice and the Face podcast, this is what I want to do with this man. I, I want to be able to have the opportunities to go to you know New Jersey to you know meet you and hang out and do this and do a podcast and you know many other people that I frequent with on the internet you know via podcasting and just do live shows with these people man and you know fucking hang absolutely. out so it, it, so whenever this absolutely, episode comes absolutely. out whenever this episode comes out that you're listening to right now um you got the dates November freaking 2nd and 3rd in uh the Showboat Casino a uh, former Showboat Casino in goddamn Atlantic City, New Jersey. <laughs> come damn, check us out. I mean, even if you don't come for the con, I mean, the con is not going to be all day. I mean, there's some nighttime. We we can go hang out in the city and do some things or whatnot. I mean, we can meet up. We can high five. I can give you that crisp high five. God damn it. <laughs> Clean one. <laughs> Make sure you wash your hands before. Oh, yeah. I have some sanitizer. <laughs> in my, yeah, I have some sanitizer in my back pocket. We can make that clean and crisp. <laughs> Right. Yeah, but man, but yeah, I, man, I, I, we yeah. got to do this again soon, sometime before the car, man, because we got to talk more wrestling, and yeah, I, I, you, I got to talk about some of my favorites. Like I said, my my number one all time is Hayabusa. Oh, word. And then next, and then next is uh, next is Flair because he's just the greatest ever. And then who I, who was my favorite, but got knocked down in number three was Mister Perfect. And then we got to talk about why the Dudleys are the greatest tag team of all time. Fuck that LOD shit. I mean, I love them, but the Dudley boys are the greatest tag team ever. But we're going to save that for another conversation. Word. Just a little teaser for y'all. <laughs> Word. But um, once again, man, I appreciate you being on the show and whatnot. And before we ride out of here, let everybody know where they can find you on social media and all the things that you got going up. Well, well the starting five show dot com is the place to, uh, is the place to get everything to find all our streaming links and all that good stuff. We got a Patreon on there. If you feel like giving us a dollar or two, you know, stick my hand out like Mr. Window and say, thank you. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 J one con, you'll see us down there. You know, like B Rob said, you can give you five on the black hand side or your white hand side. I'm not racist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Instagram, the starting five underscore podcast. Uh, if you want to follow the Twitter, I don't do that, but SF underscore ace five, but it's still fuck Twitter to me. I say fuck Twitter because I've, I've experienced that is the most hateful place mm -hmm. in social media world that I've ever witnessed. Um, and at facebook.com slash SF ace five, that's my Facebook. That's where I live. Yeah. Y'all people say it's for old people, but I'm turning 40 soon. So I guess I'm old people's. And that's where the, uh, that's where I've met the best people I've met through the internet so far. That's where I met my business partners. Shout out to HHDG Media. Shout out to HHDG. Shout out to my brother JP, my co-host. Shout out to everybody, the wife, the kids, all that. Shout out to you. Shout out to Miss B Rob for letting the big B Rob come through to <laughs> Jersey. Take it. Yeah, man. And again, just shout out to everybody in podcasting, man, and just. Keep your voices strong. Fuck you if you're a racist. And that's it. Yeah, keep it strong. <laughs> and once again, that was the mayor, Dan Dinkins, host of the Starting Five Podcast. And you got it. You heard it. The dates are set November 2nd and 3rd. The freaking J1 Con is going to be at the showboat hotel formerly a casino and whatnot. <laughs> Look that bitch up. You can go to the showboat.com, I believe it is. Uh, just type in uh, j1con.com and you can find all the information there. Get those good hotel rates. You use the j1con 
19 uh, promo code or whatever. Get you some discounts on, on the hotel rooms and whatnot. And uh, yeah, man, I, I'm excited. Another opportunity to go spread the word of the Random Rounds with Rob podcast. And, you know, network to connect with people. Give out those crisp high fives that uh, everybody been seeming to like lately. Uh, you know, my man Dan said he liked the crisp high five joint. Um, I guess from the last episode, uh, Chris Van Vliet. I keep, I keep, I got a thing now. It's almost a nervous twitch when I get to say his name. Damn, I, I like, am I going to say it right? Am I going to say it right? And most of the time I'm saying it wrong, but you know, CVV, that's probably the best for me. He, he, I, hopefully my dream, another thing that I can do, you know, in association with this podcast, to meet Chris in person and give him that crisp high five that we spoke about highly on the last episode. <laughs> but yeah, man, is um, all about motivation baby if podcasting is your bag is your jam or whatever you know put what you got into it but uh don't let it totally consume you i know people get wrapped around the axles about this thing and uh you know truth be told we all wanted to be successful we all would love uh, to generate revenue from this have this be the full-time gig but you know it's it's not meant for everybody you know i'm and i'm not putting that as a damper on anybody's dreams or whatever i mean i have that same uh dream or whatever but you know i'm also in the way of uh you know it may not work out for me i may not be in as into it as i was uh a year ago or i may not be into it as i am now a year from now so i mean who knows how this thing goes or whatever but you know as when you're doing it when you're in just damn you know, just take it for what it's worth, you know, just absorb it, you know, get what you can out of it or whatever. You know, you never know. This thing might branch off into something else totally different because you decided to do this one thing and it led you to something else, you know, might lead you to a media gig, might lead you to a commentary position. You know, this is broadcasting, you know, you go, this is your communications class and whatnot talking to people and I don't know man it's just the thing it's the stuff <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm saying but um yeah I'm, I'm excited to get back out there in the Jersey area never been to Atlantic City or what not uh, so I'm, I hope it's not well I hope it is because well, I don't know I don't fucking know what I hope the weather because it's going to be down there by the water and shit so Hope it ain't bad weather and get no fucking tidal wave or tsunami coming that bitch. You know, it's like the day after tomorrow. <laughs> you freeze up and all kind of other madness. But J1 Con, man, go to J1Con.com. Get some info on the thing. If you're in the New Jersey area, um, from what I'm being told, I'm going to be doing a show there much like how I did at Comic Palooza. So um, hit me up between nine and then if you in the jer- that uh, Atlantic City area are you willing to come down to Atlantic City you could be a guest on the Random Rounds with Rob podcast because you know this is a guest driven show and um I need a guest <laughs> so uh you know or I'll just sit there and bullshit by myself like, like I tend to do and whatnot. but uh a couple things before I ride up out of here uh happy Father's Day this is, I'm recording on a Saturday night and uh, this will be out on a Sunday. So as I look at the clock, it's an hour out. So, yeah, man. Happy Father's Day to each and every single father out there. Even if you don't like that motherfucker, you know, st- still happy Father's Day because you're here because of him. You know, so you're here for a reason. You're here for a purpose. And uh, you may not have figured it out yet, but you're here to figure that thing out so you know regardless of the situation with you and your your birth pappy or whatever you know it's still his day because he made you and you are awesome you know and if you don't even think that of yourself I'm telling you that you're freaking awesome you know every last one of you that can hear me say that you're awesome you're awesome and you have your daddy to thank for it (laughs) you know so happy father's day and uh, enjoy it. And if you know you ain't in touch with your your blood, your kin, you know, still you here, baby. <laughs> um, 
pract- I'm practicing right now. I, I, I drop a couple of Instagram videos and whatnot. Um, I'm trying to make the merch more affordable. You know, them hats. I, I, I ain't going to be able to bring that down unless I can find me somebody that'll do them shits for the low. You know, I might be able to cut a couple dollars off here and there. But damn, you know, because th- I'm looking into getting the equipment to do my own shit. You know, I'm, I'm baby stepping it right now. Um, I got a vinyl cutter and um, I got, a, you know, the freaking heat press and all that stuff. So I can do a couple of simple vinyl things and whatnot. I'm not doing I'm not going to be able to do all the intricate shit um, as far as like um, you can do a screen print, like how I got the, the panda shirt and all that other stuff that'll come later. You know, I even um, entertain the thought of uh, leasing a goddamn uh, direct-to-garment printer, man. And I've seen the price on that motherfucker. G's, man. A lot of G's in the equation. You know, double digits and whatnot. So, you know, that may be coming later. And then, you know, the way this started, this podcast started was on a whim. It was a, a hobby. And, you know, now I'm doing it all the time and you know trying to big up off of this and here i am trying to make merch and whatnot so i mean i don't know how far this will go but i had the equipment um i'm getting to know how you know i'm having fun doing it so i mean that's the most important thing it's not the profit portion of it yet if i can make a profit off of it fine you know then i'll do that for a profit but right now it's just the aspect of learning a new thing you know, having a skill in my back pocket and not to be waiting on the motherfucker, man. Just like I want a shirt. I just go make the shit myself real quick and boom, I got a shirt, especially I'm a, see now I'm going to have to have a specially made shirt for the motherfucker J1 kind, baby. And, you know, I was uh, talking to the staff, the Comic Palooza people, and I wanted to make like a custom made shirt for Comic Palooza and everything. But um. I kind of was slacking on the design work and see, and that's another thing too, that I was talking about why I'm making my own shit because like come down to crunch time. I can't, I get the, uh, you know, the artist block or the writer's block or whatever the fuck you want to call it. I can't think of no designs or whatever. And it come down to crunch time. Well, shit, I ain't got to worry about shipping it off to a motherfucker to put it on something to ship it back to me taking all this time. I can just go do it myself and have it done, you know? Yeah. But yeah. So, if I do put stuff out to sale, it'll be through randomrobcast.com and it'll be specially marked. So you will know which merchandise is from a third party provider and which merchandise is specifically made by me. So, yeah, I'm tired as fuck, man. I've been up all day. Oh, fuck, man. I almost forgot. I was about to leave this bitch and not tell y'all what happened by my damn truck. Look. Check it out. All right. About two weeks ago. So me and Mrs. It was around the time of Comic Palooza. So uh, Mrs. B. Rob got in a car accident, totaled her car, car gone, you know. So now we she in the market for another car and um, she was able to get the car and uh, she got a loan pre-approved through uh, USAA. Interest rate was kind of high, but it was uh, manageable for what she wanted to pay monthly. And um, we was just going around dealership, dealership. She wanted another Mazda 6. That was the car she originally had. She said it was um, responsible and saving her life. So she wanted the same car because she knew it's safe. And, you know, she just wanted the upgraded model. You know, she got all the bells and whistles in this motherfucker. She got like an Iron Man display in this bitch. It project up on the windshield and she can see all kind of crazy shit. But whatever. So we going to dealerships and trying to find her the perfect car. She find the car. Um, she go in there to do the paperwork and whatnot. And uh, the dealership was like, hey, you know, USA kind of busting you over the head with this interest rate. Let me uh, see what I can do and I can probably get you an interest rate lower. And, you know, she was skeptical about that shit, you know, credit reports and all this other crap. And um, they talked into it. Good salesman. <laughs> so uh, she did it, got a lower interest rate. She was able to get the car. So now she still got this USAA loan. You know, we. Cause you know, it's shared shit. And, um, she been egging me before the accident to get a new vehicle. Cause the big red machine, the, um, the van we had, the Dodge Grand Caravan, this bitch is slowly falling apart. 
um, shit falling off over there, random instances, windows breaking and shattering, you know, the modules, controls is breaking, all kinds of shit. This bitch is just falling apart. And, you know, I do the maintenance on the motherfucker. So, I mean, I don't know what the fuck is up. It's just a piece of shit. A lot of people going to say it's because it's a Dodge, but the last three vehicles I had was Dodge and I have not a damn problem with it, you know, to this extent and whatnot. So she been egging me about it and she kind of felt bad because she wrecked her car and now she got another car and you know, I ain't have shit. So still got this, uh, pre-approved USA loan. You know, I get to looking around on, on the USA website. They help you find cars and shit. So I'm looking at the trucks cause you know, I always wanted a truck, but you know, I grew up riding in trucks with my pops and everything. And then, you know, if I have to haul shit, I ain't got to rely on too many, you know, see, that's the recurrent theme. You know, you lean on people when you need the help, but if you can minimize the help that you need, <laughs> you know, you, there's less you got to worry about. You know, I, if I have a truck, I ain't got to worry about borrowing a truck or whatever. Because, like, I had situations to where I wanted to go get some shit, but I can't haul that shit in the van because it's a motherfucking van. And my brother live way down on the south side and shit, which is damn near an hour drive <laughs> to get to him and we in the same goddamn city to use his truck to drive it all the way back to whatever I'm trying to get then drive the truck all the way back nah fuck all that shit Rent, renting a vehicle from U-Haul whatever that's a hassle too so I got a truck or I wanted a truck because of that respect I'm on the Facebook mar- marketplace I see a goddamn cool ass desk I'm gonna go pick that bitch up myself anyway so found a truck decent price 2019 12 miles on that bitch get it big black bastard is what, what chase my homeboy I call it big black dodge ram so i ain't had this bitch two weeks i i go to work in this thing and um where i used to park in a parking lot there was, it was a shaded area it was under some trees and whatnot and the customers that would come there you know the ones that be waiting outside they would go in the shaded area under the trees and shit you know, because my truck is there and bitches is disrespectful as fuck. They be leaning on my goddamn truck or they be sitting down on the on the ground next to it with their back up against it and everything, you know, using it for shade and shit. So I'm constantly leaving out of my damn building, shooing motherfuckers off my goddamn truck. So uh, a couple of days ago, I decided to go park on the other side of the parking lot because the other side of the parking lot is just barren. It's just like out in the sun there's no shade there's nothing out there it's just like nobody like to park out there because it's in the fucking sun so this but so i've been parking over there because i know nobody gonna go out in the fucking heat of the goddamn concrete desert over there and fuck with my truck so i'm out there i'm doing this for a couple days and then the one day i was out there they had three other car well two other cars besides mine on that side of the parking lot it was me and two other cars nobody else there right so i had to go to the um, one of the security gates and let an agent in to the parking area because they came from a, another uh, facility so i go over check his id i move the barrier out the way so he can get in and before i can put the barrier back in place heard a boom you know like some you know how cars sound when they hit each other i was like damn somebody car got hit and I turn around, this whole fucking parking lot. They don't have to park on that side. They got a parking area, all fucking four corners of this goddamn building. You know, all, all four sides of this bitch. And all the places this motherfucker decided to park, he wanted to park by my goddamn truck. And not even park by my goddamn truck. He hit my goddamn truck. How the fuck? N- Mm, you know it gets me angry every time I think about this shit the whole barren ass parking lot and somehow some way this motherfucker find my goddamn truck and back into it son of a bitch right so I walk up and I go around the back of my truck around to the driver's side and I'm looking at it or whatever now to the eye if uh, you know after all said and done if I told you to go out there and find where you hit my truck at, you know, you wouldn't be able to find it unless I showed it to you. Cause I mean, the damage was minimal. It was like a paint peck where his bumper made contact with my bumper, a couple scrapes and everything. And 
there was a welt like in the metal where the um, bottom half of the bumper met the top half of the bumper. So this truck is two weeks old. I bought the bitch with 12 miles on it. And motherfucker done already hit it. I wasn't even in it. I wasn't even driving the motherfucker. I didn't even have the opportunity to, you know, put some blame on me, you know, say, to say I wasn't paying attention or some shit. But a motherfucker came into the parking lot and out of all the places this bitch could have parked, he chose to park by my shit and then he backed into my shit. Now, let, let's talk about the configuration of the parking spots. I'm in my parking spot. I'm in my row of parking spots and there's another row of parking spots in front of my truck. You know, three of them empty. You know, there was one to the left of mine, you know, on the row in front. There was one directly in front of me and there was one open on the freaking uh, left side of that. So there's three spots open in front of my vehicle. That fourth spot to the left had a truck there. Um, Another spot over on the right, on the other side of that third spot, a vehicle over there. Mine is there, dead center of those three spots. So if he would have backed into the one to the furthest to the left by the other vehicle, wouldn't have touched my truck at all. If he would have went to the spot to the right of my vehicle in that spot, wouldn't hit my truck at all. If he would have went in the middle, you know, seeing how he hit my shit anyway, he might have hit my truck. But he had plenty of room. And then beyond that, there's like rows and rows of nothing, nothing. He could have went way over on this side. He could they had shit by the curb where I let him in that to where he didn't even have to go in the area to where my truck was. But when this bitch backed in. He was in the middle of two parking spots, so he backed in like diagonal and just basically went straight into my motherfucking truck. And I don't understand how this shit happened. But when I went over there, he was just like, you know, eyeballing the truck and seeing what was going on. And, you know, me being the security for that building, he just thought I was there because, you know, I'm security. But I was like, motherfucker, I just bought this truck. You know, I didn't say motherfucker to him, but I said it in my head. And he's like, oh, shit, this is yours. I was like, yeah. And then, he, you know, he took some pictures, gave me his insurance information. And then um, I'm in my truck getting my insurance information. I'm looking through the windshield, you know, in his direction. And he fucking on the phone crying and shit, and, you know. And he told me previous that um, he was going through some shit and he wasn't paying attention. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. You just hit my two week old truck. God damn it. <laughs> and it threw off the whole sequence of events of everything that I had going on because today this saturday that happened uh what tuesday i believe yeah it happened tuesday so no it happened thursday it happened thursday because i got the, the rental and all this other shit but anyway besides the point today this morning at eight i got brand new pair of black rims that i was gonna put on there because it's the big black bass i gotta have some black rims god damn it right so I was going to throw them bitches on there this weekend. Then this afternoon today, I was going to get my remote starting there, my car alarm and all of my other electronics put in that bitch. So now because of this shit, I had to go turn my vehicle in to get the bumpers fixed. And with a bumper, if there's any kind of structural bends or dinks and things in it, you know they can't buff that shit out or damn bend that shit out because it's going to warp whatever the fuck is going to be inconsistent. So they had to order a new set of bumpers. When I took him, told him what happened, he seen the damage. He was just like, oh man, as soon as I get the parts in, I could probably have this done by Thursday. So it was Wednesday. I could have this shit done by Thursday, possibly Friday at the latest. Cool. So he texts me Friday. Hey man, we got the bumpers. Um, they're going to install them and then because you get off at 7 and we close at 6 you got a rental car from us we'll drive your truck to you and pick up the rental car I was like wow that's fucking awesome and um, later on in the day he's like hey man we ordered this bumper and there's like some um, some inconsistencies with the bumper or whatever or some shit it wasn't fitting flush it wasn't fitting right so 
they felt it was a defective bumper and they had to order another one. So now they got to keep it over the weekend and try to get the parts in next week to damn try to get my shit straight. And I'm like, God damn. So I got to reschedule my damn tires getting mounted and then fucking the alarm shit because it was a whim that I got that day for the appointment today on Saturday. You know, now I got to wait another two motherfucking weeks to get my shit put in. And I'm just like, fuck, man. And then the schedule I'm working in is just like, I have to wait two weeks. There's some earlier, but I have to go to work that day. And it's just fucking, ah, makes me angry. You know, I'm just sitting here ranting and raving about some bullshit. But I said I was going to tell you what the fuck happened to my goddamn truck. Now I'm riding around the motherfucking Nissan goddamn Frontier. And, it, and what's crazy about that, the numbers of the thing. I said I bought the, my truck at 12 miles. I get this rental car, this Nissan Frontier, brand new. And it had 12 miles on it. <laughs> Teasing me, comma, the universe, motherfuckers. <laughs> um, but even in the whole process of getting my car in the shop, and trying to get a fix, you know, the personnel that I was dealing with and whatnot. Um, I was asking him about some minor upgrades or not minor upgrades, but changes I was going to make to the truck because red is my favorite color and I got an all black truck. So I wanted to put some red highlights on it. So I got um, the Ram uh, logo emblem on the front and the trunk. I found it in flat, uh, gloss black and red highlights so I could put on the front and the back. And then um, it's a 1500 so I found black uh, decal tags with uh, red highlights for the 1500 Ram portion and um, I'm probably just have to hand jam the classic because it's a 1500 Ram classic so I couldn't find any red and black tags for the um, the classic logos and whatnot. so I might have to hand jam them paint them myself maybe throw some uh, vinyl on them bitches but yeah, I was talking to the dude about it. I was like, hey, man, I know y'all do uh, insurance claims and whatnot. Um, how you uh, how much would you charge me separate from um, the repairs you're doing to put these decals and logos on here? He's like, man, it's pretty easy. Blah, blah, blah. I said, well, I don't want to fuck it up. He's like, man, you bring them in. I put them on there for you. I was like, well, how much? He's like, no, don't worry about it. I just put them on for you. I was like, whoa. All right. Some free shit. I'm down with that, homie. I appreciate it. So um, I get the stuff in. And then he was just like, whenever you get it, bring it to me. I throw them bitches on there. And um, I called him to confirm, you know, because I'm he's saying he put them on there. And I'm I'm just like, what's the what's the cash? What, how much you going to charge me to put it? Because I'm worried about it. I don't want him to put the shit on there and be like, all right, that'd be a hundred bucks or some shit like that. I don't want no stupid shit like that. So I'll call him up, tell him I got decals and everything. And this is how uh, I, I do when I talk to anybody on the phone that I don't know, especially if they're doing work for me. You know, you got to be polite and courteous. He answered the phone and I was just like, good afternoon. How are you doing? And um, he was just like, um, then he got quiet. Now it's like, you're not used to nobody greeting you when they uh, talk to you on the phone. He's like, no, usually it's just somebody saying, hey, when my goddamn truck done and some shit like that. So I was like, well, that's unfortunate. I'm sorry. You have to live with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's just being nice to people, man. I I, I don't uh, get why that's like uncommon and everything. And I can tell you a real brief story about me and manners. I can remember I was in elementary school and I would um go to people's houses, you know, my friends' houses and play and everything and whatnot. And my mom and dad told me, taught me about manners you know you, excuse me yes sir no sir thank you please and all those type of things so I can remember one particular day I'm in my homeboy house we playing and um, I think one of his uh, mom's friends are there or cousins or whatever they, she was there in the house and um, you know how kids do you know we running around and we go in that, that we go outside and play well kids of our generation my kids don't do that shit <laughs> um, we go outside we play get hot get something to drink come back in then we go back out, you know, we, the in and out shit. But every time um, I would go in the house, I would pass by her and I would say, excuse me and everything. And then, um, you know, if I had to ask for something, you know, I was like, miss whatever. Could you please? And, you know, thank you. You know, just using my manners that I was taught. And just this one instance that, you know, 
I, I wouldn't say, I guess, molded me or whatever to where, you know, I always try to be polite and courteous to people. But she put, I forget how the situation went down, but I know the words were said to me. It was such a long time ago. But she pulled me to the side, I believe. And she was just like, um, you know, I want you to know that you, you're a really nice boy and you're polite and everything. And I think she either said she was going to tell my mom how polite I was or she did tell my mom how polite and stuff I was when she came pick me up one time or something like that. It went one of those two ways. And that stuck with me. Like, for a long 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 time you know I'm still thinking about it today you know in certain instances to where like just me being polite you know perks up somebody today and whatnot especially when I'm dealing with people that doing something for me man because you know you don't want to make the people that's doing shit for you upset or think you're a dick then you wind up <laughs> having your shit fucked up I'm riding down motherfucking goddamn parkway 99 and shit and I'm like Oh man, why my check engine light on? My brakes, no, smash. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to share that with y'all. Just be polite to motherfuckers. And happy Father's Day to your deadbeat daddies. If you ain't got that good rapport, and happy Father's Day to all the good pappies and every every pappy out there. God damn it, mine included. Eugene Robinson Senior, love you. Happy Father's Day, and um, all my brothers, happy Father's Day, and all my friends, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to every damn pappy all over the world. All right, that's enough. Um, I'm not going to even do the rest of my shit. I mean, you know where to find me by now. On Twitter, at It's B Rob. This show, on Twitter, 3R Show. Go to randomrobcast.com. Find many different ways that you can help support the show. Um, buy some merch. I would appreciate that much. Um, be a patron. I would appreciate that also. I know... I don't know about this Patreon thing. I mean, I'm appreciative of the two, three people that's doing it now, but um, I need to come up with something to where I can change it, do some more for it or whatever. Because I know I'm slacking, man. You know, and I, I appreciate the two or three of you that's hanging in there this long, and you're the best and whatnot. One of y'all got a birthday coming up, so I, you know I, I'm gonna come through on that. And you know, I just feel bad because I feel like I could be doing more and people are putting into that you know small amounts but still they took it you know they're taking money out of their paychecks and they you know stuff they need in their life to you know get that to me and that means a lot and I, I need I need to need to plan I don't know why I'm whispering because ain't nobody here but me and the kids and they up in this fucking summer hate the goddamn summer because it's goddamn hot <laughs> there's another gripe follow me on instagram walking the hollow halls of walmart you motherfuckers missed out on some merch man i told you all you had to do was dm me uh what my first cd was uh, from the last episode with cvv and uh ain't nobody uh took that up man i'm trying to give you free shit but um if you want to pay for it randomrobcast.com uh <laughs> new jersey atlantic city november 2nd november 3rd j1 con hit me up and yo, I'll see you next time.